Changing your blanks, cutting carbon, you know, trimming, tuning, and getting the best out of the action power. Many people get scared about this subject. I'm not at all scared. I'm ready to get the hacksaw out and start cutting some carbon. This is Rob Building. I'm Gary Benny, English rod builder living in Sweden. I've been building rods for many years and now you're going to join me in my workshop going through tips, tricks, techniques, tools of the trade, all the things you want to know when you're coming to build a rod. We're going to drink a lot of tea so join me on the ride, let's have some fun. This is rod building, let's do this. So trimming carbon, uh, tuning the blanks, people get really scared about it and I guess it's because they're worried about breaking the carbon blank and, and I'm rightly so. For me though, I'm not scared whatsoever and when I hear the word blank, I think blank canvas, I think a starting block. Just because the blank is eight foot doesn't mean it has to be an eight foot rod when it's built and many of my finest rods I've built have been tuned and trimmed down from larger lengths. I've worked out exactly how to get another totally different application rod from another blank. So that's what we're gonna look at. I've got three blanks on the desk here today. They're totally different blanks. One is a very lightweight rod. One is sort of, let's call it a medium power rod. And the other one is a really heavy tuner stand-up. All of these blanks can be trimmed and tuned to make other options. Let's get cutting. So we've got loads of tools on the desk to cut these blanks down and uh, I'm looking forward to doing this. I know people get really freaked out about it, but let's just think about what happens when you cut a blank. Um, there's no harm in cutting the blank if you're using sharp blades and the right tools. Don't worry about it. Um, you do need to go a little bit careful. You don't want to splinter the carbon, of course, but we'll show you that in a bit. There's nothing to worry about. But basically all you're going to be doing is if you're taking away anything from the tip, you're going to make the rod faster. If you're taking anything off the butt, you're making the rod slower. That's just basic principles. There's more power and material in the butt of the blank and there's less in the top. So if you basically think you're doing that, you're moving it up and down. That's a, an easy sort of slide scale to consider to start with. So if we take this tuner blank, for example, uh, this blank here, it's too long. If we were gonna build this with the butt that goes on, this is gonna be what we call a back breaker. So we're gonna have a big aluminium butt on this one, and this is gonna be trimmed down to this mark here, which is gonna be perfect to fit into the butt it needs to be. Also, it's gonna be trimmed very slightly on the tip, and the reason for that is because we want the rod to be slightly faster. We want it to be a little bit more power than it already is. Now, this rod is super powerful, but trust me, just taking two inches off the top will make a big difference. It's going to make the rod feel a little bit quicker and um, a little bit stiffer, basically. So that's what we're gonna do with this one. Let's get cutting. We've got our cutting jig in the vise and we're gonna trim it. I've uh, sized it up, I've marked exactly the length I need to cut on the back and I've also marked it on the tip. Um, now this here is absolutely perfect for doing the butts. Uh, this is actually a tool uh, that is designed for cutting down mountain bike parts like handles and grips. So you can get it from your local bike store, get that one in position like so. What this does, it makes it really easy to get your hacksaw and very simply it's a guide that goes through. So I can just check now when I put the blade down, that's right on the edge of the tape and then simply through the blank and you get a really nice clean flat cut which is great with this jig. So now we're going to cut the tip and uh, for this I just use a very simple tabletop vise which is very easy. I use these soft uh, jaw chucks in there and I've got it marked up and all I'm going to do is just move it back until I get the tape mark right on the edge there like so and I can use a hacksaw and you can just, just gently guide the hacksaw down through, like so. Again, a nice clean cut, nothing to worry about, remove the tape, and that is absolutely perfect. Now we've got our blank completely sized, so what we've done now, we've removed power from the top, but we're gonna have a solid butt, so it's not really gonna make much of a difference, but we've also increased the power on the tip by removing a little bit. So this little short and stubby, as we call it now, is absolutely crazy power. When that's building a tuner rod, that's gonna land some absolutely massive bluefin. So that's the first little trim and tune. Basics on this one, 
how to change it. You do need to consider the taper is going to increase when you're choosing your tip top size. So you're going to make the OD larger here and the OD will be less here. So just bear that in mind. Now we're going to look at a heavy freshwater blank instead. So this blank here is a seven foot 10, so pretty much eight foot almost, uh, 15 to 30 line class, and it's up to four ounces, swim bait blank. Now this is a really fast action blank. It's super lightweight. Um, but what I want to use this rod for is jerk bait fishing. Now I'm gonna have to do two things with this one. Uh, the jerk baits that I'm talking about is like sliders, it's for pike, and they're quite big and they're quite heavy. They're weighing about 100 grams. Now, this rod can work for that, but it's a little bit too long, so I do need to reduce the length. And there's a lot of butt power in a swim bait blank, so I can afford to lose a little bit in the back. That's also gonna help the diameter of the blank decrease. Now, when I do that, that is gonna make the blank a little bit slower, because I'm gonna move up the blank towards the top action. But what I'm then gonna do is I'm going to remove a little bit from the tip and just take away that tippiness because when you're banging and you're working the baits like this, you don't want the tip to be like moving around too much. I want a slightly stiffer tip. So I'm gonna reduce the tip a little bit. That's gonna make the blank even faster again and give a slightly stiffer tip that's gonna make it even easier to work those big hard jerk baits. So I'm gonna measure this one up to size and we will start cutting. Seven foot three. Okay, so uh, we're going to start by cutting this one up. Now, the one thing to remember when you're cutting tips like this is I don't want the guides to be too big on this rod. And some tube sizes on certain guide ring sizes only go up to a certain amount. So always double check what you're going to do. If you were to cut this too far back, you probably wouldn't be able to get a tube size to fit it. But this is quite a skinny tip, so it's not going to be too much of a problem. I am going to start by taking off one inch off the top only and seeing how it feels. Um, and then before I cut the butt, because I can always leave material on, but I can't really add it in an easy way. So I'm gonna start with cutting off an inch, see how it feels, play with it a little bit, and then if I need to cut off more, I can trim it down. So for cutting these fine tips, a really good way is a fine cutting blade on like this Dremel. Uh, really easy to use. I like this extension cable you have because it means you don't have to hold the actual Dremel, you can just leave it on your workbench there. And then you can just bring it alongside and cut off, just rotate in the blank very gently and you'll cut through that fine tip without causing any damage. If you did try to use a hacksaw, sometimes the hacksaw can jump a little bit and you will find you'll splinter the blank. So this works really good. Uh, I'm gonna put on some safety gear, make the cut. See you on the other side. Well, there we have it. That went pretty good. We had a bit of a kick back off the tip there, which is why you should always have the glasses and that on. And that looks really good. I'm just gonna test it now. I'm not gonna sand it down yet. I normally take a bit of very light 400 sandpaper just to round off the cut. Uh, so it makes it nice to put the tip on so you don't push any carbon or anything back. So I'm gonna fill this one up now, see how it feels in deflection board and make a decision. <laughs> So what I'm doing, I'm pulling the blank down to around about 90 degrees and I want to sort of feel the resistance I've got. Now, this comes from feel and also knowing the fishing style. Uh, I want to see where the rod really starts to load. Um, at the moment, the rod is really fast. So even when I get here, um, I can already feel that it's starting to really load up. So the rod is gonna be quite responsive. I think I could take a little bit more off the tip if I really wanted just to make it a little bit stiffer, but then I'll be worried I won't get the casting accuracy on the smaller jerk baits. I don't want the rod to be just really stiff, that'd be boring. So I actually think that one inch off the tip has made a really big difference and we're gonna leave it right there and cut the rest off the butt. And there we have it, another nice straight cut. We can remove that tape now, get a little bit of light sandpaper. I'm just gonna buff up the edges so we know it's absolutely perfect. And we've trimmed our blank to size. So 
So perfect. Now we've got a seven foot three jerk bait blank that was almost eight foot when we started. The action is absolutely spot on now to what I need. Um, obviously the blank's gonna be lighter, the blank's gonna be thinner, but I haven't taken too much away to lose the butt power. And that's very important when you're trimming down the blanks. You don't wanna take down the actual true power of the rod, otherwise it'll become a noodle. So go very careful. I would advise you to do more cuts and just keep tuning back until you feel like you've got it exactly perfect. Got one last one to go, and that's gonna be a really thin perch rod. We'll see a before and after on that one because it'll make a really big difference to what we're gonna do. So we've got this little spin jig six foot eight uh, on the deflection chart here, and I'm just feeling it. I'm not using the deflection chart as I really should with actually weights, because I'm just using this to feel the action. And what I'm looking for is where the rod starts to really load, and it's, it's roughly there, so it's quite deep. That's when the, the rod really starts to stiffen up. Um, I'm just going to drop it back a little bit and I need to really reduce this tip. I want the, the rod to be a little bit quicker uh, so I can work with stiffer baits because I do need to get the tip, the, the tip back um, a little bit and I think I can afford to drop a little bit out of the butt as well without risking uh, making it too soft. The thing about this blank is it's going to be a bait caster and I don't want to feel like a noodle for the customer. So I can't take too much power out of the back of the rod otherwise it's just going to feel horrible. So I'm thinking what we need there is we're gonna to have to take it like two inches out the tip and that's gonna make it quite pokey for his twitch baits and maybe one inch out of the butt. Let's have a go. So there we go. I've trimmed off one inch off the back, two inch off the top, so three inch in total, uh, bringing the blank down to six five at the moment. Um, I don't really want to go too short on it because although he's fishing in the UK and on canals, uh, I know he still wants a little bit of length. So I'm going to see how this feels now and where we're at. So same as before, just pulling it down and immediately I can feel that there's a much more resistance. You can see I'm not reaching the same as I was before. I'm, I'm having to put a lot more pressure in to bring that in. It's, it's almost perfect, but the tip feels good and I think it's, it's almost there. I could if I want to take a little bit more out, but you see, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the tip OD very heavy, very big, and it's going to be a little bit too stiff. I think now we're about perfect. So we've got the rod down to six foot five. Uh, he gave me a tolerance of six three. So I think I could take a little bit more out of the butt if I need, but I don't think I take any more out of the tip, otherwise you're gonna be bouncing fish, because he wants to be casting light lures, and if you make the tip too stiff, you're gonna lose accuracy for your casting, so we're gonna keep it there. I think I might take another inch out of the butt. So a top tip when you're cutting with your Dremel and stuff like that is use a bit of tape. You've seen me putting it on there to line up with, but when you're cutting like this with a rotary disc and you're turning the blank, it gives you that line as reference for your eye, so you'll get a nice straight cut. So there you have it, we've trimmed and tuned three blanks. So effectively, if you were to own these three blank models, you've actually got six in your artillery to use. So think about that whenever you're buying a blank. Don't always look at the length you've got, look at the length you could achieve. Don't look at the power you've got, look at the power you could achieve. And try and tune, because that is custom rod building in a nutshell. I don't think there's anything more to go over in that. I've given you the basic and principles about what to think of, the action, the power, reducing and addition. Um, of course, always remember, it's easier to take away than it is to add. So think about that and never cut more than what you really need. I always say that famous saying, measure twice, cut once. This is Rob Building. Thank you very much for today. Make sure to ring that notification bell, subscribe to our channel. Anything you want to see, make sure to comment in the section below and we'll try and do a video for you. So from me to you, that's a wrap.